This is Gary Fleck with Proven Learning. Proven Learning is the sole source for GradeCam in eight states in Southeast United States. Today we're going to be doing some GradeCam training, primarily for those who have school and district licenses. This is one of three video sessions. In this first video, we'll do a brief GradeCam introduction spend the bulk of our time on basic grade cam use, but then we'll also discuss a little bit about support and a couple of scanning tips that might be helpful to you. In the second video, we'll cover your home page operations, including features such as data sharing and reports. Then in the third video, we'll go over the options in customizing assessments for different question types including multiple version tests. GradeCam is the brainchild of fifth grade teacher, Tammy Porter, whose goal was to not only get her weekends back, but also to be able to spend some quality time in the classroom teaching instead of spending lots of time grading. To that end, GradeCam was born and now serves tens of thousands of teachers across the globe. GradeCam is a web-based service that allows you collect, to collect and analyze data from any source via bubble sheets of either multiple choice, rubric-based questions, or gridded response questions, and then analyze them, uh, then scan them in the classroom using almost any camera source that you already own, document cameras, iPads, iPhones, Android devices, web cameras, little web camera on your laptop, all of these can be used to scan GradeCam student sheets and all on plain paper. Let's get started. I'm going to log into GradeCam from gradecam.com site and this takes me to my login page. Now for school and district users, you will receive an email invitation asking you to join the license. When you accept that invitation, you will set up your credentials or join your existing GradeCam account to the license. And then as soon as you uh, join that license, all of your rosters will immediately be available to you as they've been imported already into the license for you. They will also be managed for you on a regular basis. So look out for that email invitation to accept. I'm going to log in from the login page, and that takes me to my home page on GradeCam. Now for new users, here's a couple of tips that you might want to know in using GradeCam just generally. First of all, GradeCam is a web-based service, so you cannot break it. Feel free to press buttons and find out where things go. Just kind of wander around the site. Uh, click on different, different areas so you become familiarized with what all is involved in GradeCam, and that will make, make it a little bit easier for you in the future. The second thing is that you get an unlimited number of scans, so you're not going to run out of anything. So if you decide you want to do a little mock quiz in your classroom or perhaps a survey for your students or maybe class-wide elections uh, just to be able to get to use GradeCam, feel free to do that. You're not going to run out of anything. And it will help familiarize you with GradeCam functions. So new users, I'm logged on to GradeCam's homepage. And on this home page is a list of assignments that I've created in the past. So I'm going to create a new assignment with this big blue new button. I'll click new. And then multiple question assignments. That's where you're going to live about 90% of the time. It's going to ask me to name this assignment, and let's call this a benchmark sign assignment. Give it a length, and GradeCam supports assessments up to a 1,000 questions long. 
We'll make this one 10 and click Save. And that's going to take me immediately to a page where I'm going to make an answer key. So here's the 10 questions that I've, just, I've told Graycam that I want to make an answer key for. Now in a third video, we're going to talk about how we can customize these questions by using the checkbox and uh, assigning standards to our questions so we can track students by standard, or by changing the type of question from either multiple choice to rubric-based questions for constructed response uh, answers, and number grid questions for gridded response mathematical questions. But for new users, we're going to make a quick quiz here. And we're going to do that by either bubbling in the answers manually, or I can also choose to print off a blank sheet and make an answer key. And I'll show you how to do that in the second session. I, put, I can put that underneath my, my document camera, and that's going to fill the bubbles in for me like that. Once I've created an answer key, I'll make forms for my students, and then click Scan, and then start scanning my students. So either under a document camera or walking around class with your mobile device, you can be scoring, scoring these assessments. Now, one of the options that I have as a teacher, particularly with a document camera, is to set up a station where students can score their own work. From this scanning window, if I maximize it by using the X here, it puts Gradecam in student mode. And it's going to score that one student's assessment and give this student their feedback. There's the, the score as well as what questions they've missed. Now they can actually take the bubble sheet, go back and rework it and change the question, the answers, uh, and, and then come back up and rescore that assessment if that's what you want them to do. The space bar hides that student's data so the next student can come up and put their assessment underneath it and scan it. Now notice on this assessment that the student's name and ID are listed on this assessment. We're printing class sets of these. So each student gets their own bubble sheet. Their information is encoded in this form identifier at the bottom of the bubble sheet. What that means is that you can make sheets and laminate them and use them over and over again, particularly for the things that you do on a daily basis. So here's a sheet that I have in a, a non-glare sheet protector, and along with a dry erase marker, the student would just fill in the answers that they would normally, they would they would put in for this particular quiz or bell ringer or whatever it is. And then we'll scan that. And of course, grade cam scans it. And since it's uh, dry erase, you can use that over and over again. Now let me reiterate that you can use not only a document camera like I'm using here, but you can also use uh, uh, pads such as iPads or Android pads or iPhones, Android phones, there are web, there are applications available, free apps available for them in respective stores under GradeCam Go. You can also use you can also use web cameras. So either the one perhaps that's on your laptop or something like this that I picked up from uh, Amazon at, for not too much money. All of those will work in order to scan GradeCam student sheets. Okay, let's go back to where we collected all that data. And here's all the, the collected data that we just scanned in, including all the correct scores. I'm going to transfer these grades directly into my gradebook. Whatever electronic gradebook you currently use, GradeCam will transfer the grades directly into that gradebook for you, whether it's PowerSchool or Infinite Campus or any one of the web-based uh, gradebooks. 
And I'll do that by clicking on the transfer button in the upper right. I'm going to choose the class that I'm transferring from, and I only scanned in one class in this case, so I'll click on that one class. And, and then at the bottom of this review page, it says, leave this page open. You open your gradebook in another window, and then you click in the box where you normally would type in the first score for the student, but instead of typing in the score, you press the F8 key. So I'm going to leave this window open. I'm going to open up my gradebook, which just happens to be Excel in this case, but it works the same in Excel as it does in a gradebook. It's looking for a spreadsheet to fill. And I'll click on the first cell. Oh, I've created the assignment like you typically do. Highlight the first cell, and instead of typing in the grade, I'm going to press the F8 key, and GradeCam is going to transfer the grades directly into my gradebook for me. I also have some reports that are immediately available to me. So working formatively in the classroom for this little quiz that we gave, I'm going to click on Reports. And I first of all start with a score graph that's customized to my school or district by color as well as by the range that that color represents. All of those are customizable in your settings. I also have item analysis so I can see particularly which questions I need to, I need to double back on, where we need work on in, uh, right now. All of this is available in real time. So as you scan your students in, all of this data is immediately available to you. So let me go back one more time, and I'm going to set up one more, one more assessment just to show you one more time how that works. So I'm going to go back home, and the big orange G always takes me home. Here's the assessment that we just currently made. It's available to use again if I choose, but I'll make a new multiple question assignment, name it, and we'll call this one homework. Give it a length, save it, takes me to the answer key page make my answer key, print forms for my students, and then click scan and scan my students in. That's basic grade cam, and the place you'll start as a new user. Now, for new users, there's also some places to find support in order to get some additional tutorial help. Under my name in the upper right-hand corner is a drop-down with a link to support. So if I click on support, it opens up another website where I have available to me bite-sized pieces of grade of grade cam tutorials under grade cam go tutorials I'll click there and here's a list of all the different little pieces of grade cam not only what we covered today but also what we're going to cover in the future all of it to you at the top of this same support uh, page is a phone number for phoning for support as well as an email address in order to make email requests for support from grade cam you're also welcome to email me if you choose, particularly with questions about training or things that questions you may have had about this particular session. My email address is right here, gary.fleck 
at ProvenLearning.com. And again, you are welcome to email me if you have any questions regarding what we've done today. A couple of tips. I've found the grade cam tends to work better under lower light conditions, that is to a point. Overhead lights can cause glare and blind the camera eye for effective scanning. So if you're experiencing any difficulty, try either lowering the lights or moving it, the, the camera to some place where there are no, aren't any uh, direct overhead lights. Or perhaps you can, you can also scan at an angle by holding the, the sheet at an angle under the camera so that you're not getting any glare and it's not directly up into the camera light. Uh, I've also used a thick binder, an empty thick binder laid underneath the camera so it becomes a, a slanted surface to be able to scan on. Those are all ideas that'll work. Second, because GradeCam is scanning across the web, the first scan of a set tends to take a second or two longer as GradeCam is setting up that scanning link. Okay, I wanna thank you for your time here uh, with GradeCam training and appreciate the opportunity to, to do this for you. Again, this is the first of three video series in a series. The second will cover the whole home page operations and we'll talk about all the different pieces that are available here on the home page so you'll know what's going on, uh, including data sharing and reports. And then in the third video, we'll create assessments and customize them so that they actually match the type of assessments you give that aren't just multiple choice. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope that this time was valuable for you, and I hope that you're able to get some valuable time back, not only for your personal time, but also for your students as well. Thank you very much.